Let's begin the show. How are you doing, Shabaks? I've been just wondering what's the weather like where you guys live because here in Poland, I would say the winter just came. You don't see maybe that much of a snow right now, but it's quite cold. So today I'm spending more time in the studio doing some maintenance, like preparing killer for the winter. By the way, there is something new coming from Cannondale to my studio uh, and it should arrive within two weeks. It will be so exciting, so stay tuned for that. But today we're talking about five maintenance, maintenance things you should do with your new bikes. Basically, uh, I'm trying to tell you that if you purchase new bike, um, either in the store, like your lo local store or online, uh, it's not quite ready for riding. And unfortunately, there is so many things that some manufacturers or most of the manufacturers don't care about. Uh, I'm going to point those out right now. I'm pretty sure that uh, maybe 99% of you guys uh, would have to do at least two of those uh, things on your new bikes. Shall we start? All right, let's start. Here we have a new uh, Marin Gestalt. Uh, by the way, I'm not picking on this bike. Uh, what I'm talking about in this episode is just uh, my experience from purchasing different uh, bicycles. But let's start with the first thing and that's the wheels. When you purchase the bike, you should definitely, definitely check out whether the wheels are true because as you can see, this one isn't quite true. You can see the rim uh, moving up and down. That's not really good. And also uh, when you look from like from the back or from the, uh, from the front of the bike, you can also check out how true the rim is. And this one uh, moves also from side to side for about one or two millimeters. So that's uh, one thing that you could actually and you should actually go back with the bike to the store and say, hey, please true my wheels because all the new wheels, doesn't matter how expensive or how cheap uh, your bicycle was, should be 100% true. And also after a couple of rides, uh, of rides you know, the, those spokes will just find uh, their place uh, in the in the whole structure of the wheel, uh, the wheel can can come a little bit out of true. So then you should do the maintenance, like truing the wheel. Of course, if you purchase the bike online, uh, it's not really cost effective to be sending those wheels back to the store just to make some little adjustments. If you can do it for yourself, do it. Uh, if you if you can't, go to your local store and just ask people to do it for you because many wheels will not be 100% true. I would say up to one millimeter is okay. This one is uh, okay up and down, but going just a li little bit from side to side, the re rear one is better. The front one needs some adjustments. Uh, it's not like a, a bad wheel, it just needs adjustments. I would say also that if you purchase the bike with some stock wheels, stock wheels, I mean, if you purchase like Marin, Trek, Giant, Cannondale, on Mavic wheels, on Campagnolo wheels, on Fulcrum wheels. Uh, these would normally be very good. But if you purchase the bike um, which just puts their stickers onto some uh, cheap wheels, usually uh, they really save time uh, by lacing those wheels like super quickly in the factory and those just need adjustment. Those could be just fine, good wheels, but need adjustment. So that would be first thing. The second one is the tires, because also when you look at the tires, sometimes, uh, sometimes, quite often, you may find out that the rim is okay, but the tire is moving either uh, from side to side uh, or up and down. Uh, if you've seen any of the movies uh, showing how uh, those uh, those guys working in the factories like in Taiwan, this one was made in Indonesia, how do they actually put the inner tube into the wheel and then pump it? It's like 10 seconds, they just uh, put the inner tube, they uh, lock uh, the tire and then by using some pressure they just pump it up uh, uh, all at once, which we, we never should do like that. Because when we pump the wheel, you can check out my other episode about it, we should pump first very very little and then um, try to help the tire to find its place 
uh, in the rim and then pump uh, into the full uh, pressure that you really want to have on your bike. So you can see the line or the marking here on the side of, of the on the sidewall of uh, the tire and the distance between this mark or line and the rim should be always uh, even. Now some tires also are, are, are just lousy and not really true uh, but you should what you should do with your new bike is to let me just show you very very quickly let out some of the air from the tire Okay, and then by pushing the sidewalls from both sides with our hands, we are helping the tire to actually fit into the uh, walls of the rim. So you should have as little uh, air as it will just help you to do, do this. So you can actually move around the tire uh, in the wheel, then you can ride it. Why is it important? Of course, you want to have true wheel and true tire, but also quite often the, uh, the bead of the tire can kind of bite uh, the inner tube if it's uh, being done too quickly. Because if you put the inner tube um, into the tire, then you lock the bead and you pump it up just all at once, uh, the, the, um, uh, the inner tube can always go just a little bit under the bead and then you just lose the inner tube and many factories just don't care about your inner tubes. That was also my experience with Cannondale, my just beloved brand. So be careful of that. Uh, if you don't mind, you know, uh, losing maybe five or 10 minutes to do that, you can save money for the inner tube or just save yourself by just, you know, uh, puncturing somewhere in the middle of nowhere. So, Checking the, how true your wheels are and adjusting it, just truing your wheels. Second, checking how well uh, the um, inner tube and the tire installation is uh, on your bike is really uh, important. Then the third thing, it's also your safety. You just grab some multi-tool and check out all those bolts, uh, all the bolts in the bike. So you just want to check out how well those uh, are those tightened. So these bolts, like for the bottle cages, you just don't want to lose those. By the way, that was the case with this bolt here on the other side. It was almost uh, lost when I went for the first ride. So check out if the bolts are uh, just uh, tightened well enough. I'm not uh, saying that you should be tightening those. Just check out whether the, these are not loose. Important thing, you never mess up with this bolt from the headset when these two uh, on the stem are tightened. So I would not um, just touch even this one, but always check out whether these bolts uh, mounting our stem uh, are tightened and also the bolts that are uh, tightening the handlebar to the stem. So just check it out. Okay, it's not loose, uh, loosened, it's, it's fine. Uh, and leave it, don't mess up, mess up with this one. Um, when you will feel that you have some play in the headset, then you have to unscrew these and adjust um, the play with, the, with this bolt. I also made another episode uh, on that. Very important thing, check out the bolts that are mounting your, uh, your crankset or chain rings. Uh, this can cause also some, some creaking, some noise if it's not done uh, well. This bolt was quite loosened uh, on this bike, by the way, and also the bolts on the other side that are um, assembling or, um, the, the caliper to the frame. Just check it out, they should not be uh, loosened. So, another bolt is also here on the other side, um, tightening the crank arm. Unfortunately, you will find out quite often that some bolts are, aren't just uh, made uh, or tightened well enough on doesn't matter either $500 bike or $5,000 bike unfortunately all right so once we have done our wheels and tires and the bolts then there comes the chain and I would say almost all of the bike uh, need this uh, first off maybe uh, make sure that you have uh, the directional or uh, undirectional chain if the chain is directional that means 
that it has the outer plates and the inner plates and uh, the outer plates should be on the outer side uh, of course so if the chain has any signs on it you should see those on the outside if it's just plain you don't see any like Shimano HG X anything that means uh, it's been done in the wrong way and that was also my experience with my Canon Day brand new uh, Canon Air Cat 10 so that's just a little thing you should uh, remember about but the huge part of the chain is that when you get the new bike with the new chain it's so sticky now there is one thing you should do and the other uh, which is don't for this uh, part now what this chain needs is it needs some kind of the degreaser and some cloth or wiper uh, don't here is uh, uh, something you should not do is that you should not dip your chain into the degreaser because uh, you need lubrication of your chain from the inside out and also it can damage your chain actually depending on what kind of degreaser you, you use but if you simply do something like that with your cloth and then I'm just holding this uh, cloth around my, around my chain and uh, I pedal uh, backwards for a couple of times until those plates from the from the outside are not so sticky I'm done with my work so you won't have to be uh, lubricating your chain for a couple of rides because uh, this original loop is sticky so um, it maybe makes uh, the drivetrain work a bit harder but it's okay it will prolong the life of your uh, of your chain actually but from the outside it should not be sticky otherwise if you just take your brand new bike with a brand new chain with this lubrication on it it will be so messy and then you will actually have to uh, deep clean your chain because it will be so so dirty all right so we've checked whether the chain is being assembled in the right way you should see the the logos on the outside uh, the chain is uh, not sticky anymore now the little part but also so important for us and it's the protection stickers most of the bikes would have some small sticker here on the chain stay which is way too small in my opinion because you will be able to scratch your chain stays with the chain just behind it as you can see this sticker ends here but even more importantly there is no protection here between the chain stay and the chain ring which should just not be like that of course with the carbon bike uh, it's even more crucial because you can actually damage the carbon but, but here you don't want to have those uh, those nasty scratches that's why you need some protection i'm going to show you that in a minute but other place here is the head tube or actually anywhere where you have the housing rubbing against the the frame as you can see uh, this um, front brake uh, housing is beautifully <laughs> rubbing uh, our headset if there would be any kind of dirt or mud you will very quickly get rid of your beautiful paint on your bike so that's one thing and also here in the rear the last part of the housing uh, to the rear derailleur will also um, uh, just take off your uh, paint from the from the frame so what you want to use is either some original stickers like protective stickers these are from Mavic uh, and there is some special sticker for the chainstay and then different sizes of the stickers for your uh, head tube or also maybe between the housing of your rear derailleur and the chainstay also between the chain rings and, and the chainstay so you just you can purchase this uh, this one and such thing and use it but also you may simply want to use a tape and also you will be able to replace this periodically now um, there is one thing you should be aware of and it's what kind of a glue that uh, the the tape has perhaps you'd be able also to damage your paint on the bike I don't know about that this is just the example of the tape I've been using for years uh, and I was using this one uh, for some uh, cadence sensor like under the cadence sensor and speed sensor 
uh, on the bike and I've never had any problems with, uh, with uh, the paint and this tape. The only problem here is that uh, if it stays on the frame like very very long time for maybe a year or so it will be more difficult to take it off because it will be just ripping apart uh, but it's just okay um, and then you can replace it it stays clean uh, and looks nice of course there's there are also some special stickers designed for the uh, crankset it's nice to have this anodized crankset but crankset isn't maybe that important as the frame is so guys really check out your new wheels this should be true and if, if they're not uh, the store should uh, fix that for you uh, check out your tires the tires should be true and you don't want to be puncturing uh, your inner tubes just because the bit of the tire uh, bites against uh, your uh, inner tube so that was a very important thing check out all the bolts clean the chain just from the outside and make sure it's on the right side um, on your bike and finally put the stickers on this is uh, from my perspective this is my experience uh, if you have uh, experienced any other issues like maybe brakes or just anything else that uh, you would really um, say it's important to check it out before you go for the first ride let me know in the comment section Thank you so much for, for supporting me and uh, viewing my videos and I will see you tomorrow. Bye bye Shy Bikes!